complete, but testing is not. Two animal tests are performed. One, on white mice injected with vaccine, is called the LCM test. And the live monkey potency test. Monkeys receive poliomyelitis vaccine, then are observed and examined to be sure the vaccine is potent enough to cause formation of polio-fighting antibodies in humans. More tests. A sterility test, the sixth of its kind, is performed. It takes time and infinite care. Only vaccine found completely free of bacteria is approved for the next step. That step is putting vaccine into bottles under completely sterile conditions. These are the bottles which finally will find their way to doctors' offices and clinics all over the country. Even as they reach the end of the production line, other tests are in progress and samples are sent to the government. No vaccine can leave the pharmaceutical house until all tests by the manufacturer and the government are completed satisfactorily. The protocol is finished, then sent to the National Institutes of Health for government approval required by law. In Bethesda, Maryland, the National Institutes of Health is a vast center of medical progress, the main research arm of the United States Public Health Service. In the office of Dr. Roderick Murray, Chief of the Division of Biologic Standards, the manufacturer's protocol is first reviewed. Then Dr. Murray summons two scientists from his staff. Each is given a copy of the protocol which he will study carefully, checking every process, every test for consistency. At the same time, another vital judgment is being made in the laboratories of the National Institutes of Health. Here a sample from every batch of vaccine is received. Then subjected to a whole battery of complex scientific tests. A sterility test confirming those of the manufacturer is carried out. A tissue culture test on the vaccine sample Again, substantiating tests already made by the manufacturer. Living tissue is inoculated with poliomyelitis vaccine, incubated, then carefully examined. The monkey test, one of the most important tests. 20 monkeys are involved in the testing of every lot of vaccine, and each receives three injections from the manufacturer's sample. The purpose, once again, to confirm the safety and effectiveness of the polio vaccine. These are just some of the painstaking review and testing procedures of the National Institutes of Health, each contributing to the final judgment and recommendation on every lot of vaccine. Once the Public Health Service authorizes its release, the polio vaccine can begin to protect American youngsters. In 1955, over 10 million children received one or more injections of salt vaccine, including this boy, the president's own grandson, David Eisenhower. And now, like millions of boys and girls across the nation, David, too, is protected against paralytic polio, free to play and enjoy the delights of summertime with the president, his grandfather. From the United States Public Health Service, a report on these vaccinations in 1955 by the distinguished former Surgeon General, Dr. Leonard A. Sheely. As we enter the second year of wide-scale use of the Salk polio vaccine, it's my very pleasant duty to report to you the results of polio vaccinations to date, Public Health Service findings on the effectiveness of the vaccine add up to good news indeed. We had an especially good opportunity to study effectiveness last year. Here is a very simple chart which indicates how the vaccine worked during 1955. It is based on reports from 22 states and New York City among vaccinated children, as you can see. 
the attack rate for paralytic polio was only 6.3 per 100,000, while among the unvaccinated, their attack rate was 29.2 per 100,000, almost four times as high. The studies involved about eight and one half million children whose ages ranged from five to 11 years. Even though most of the vaccinated children had, had only one injection instead of the full dosage of three, the vaccine was found to be about 78% effective. Put in another way, the boys and girls who received at least one injection of vaccine had about four times as much protection as those without it. We can all be proud of the soft vaccine brought about by American scientists and American giving. We can all share in the hope that this victory will lead to many more in the years ahead. For maximum protection from paralytic polio, three inoculations. The second given not less than two weeks after the first. The third not less than seven months later. Your child or any member of your family eligible for polio vaccine in your community should be vaccinated now. Vaccination now will save lives from death or paralysis this year. Make use of increasing supplies of vaccine. Help your child grow up strong and straight, free from crippling polio. Youngsters like David Eisenhower, like polio pioneer Randy Kerr, are part of a bright new future. A future which will see the unconditional surrender of infantile paralysis. American homes and homes every class.